oil separation that's per case in use. Reuse refrigerant. If oil logged heat exchanger, usually would rather replace oil or add after. I personally would much rather replace that oil. If I have to, whatever oil amount it was, while it could literally be majority of your oil charge, ideally it wouldn't be. Um, but it, you know, let's give an example of, of a situation like this. Um, an RTHD, those are horrid at oil migration. And so, so that's a water cooled screw uh, chiller. And if I, so if the, if the machine isn't online and I can't do a, um, I can't get the compressor running to recover that oil first. And that means that all I have is just in the evaporator and it's stuck there. Um, I'm going to go through that procedure I talked about earlier, recover the system down, try my best to, to judge getting the, uh, the worst of the oil latent refrigerant, which is going to be on top into a uh, specific cylinder. And so uh, from there I can try to boil that refrigerant back out of that oil, get, get the refrigerant back, but I'm not going to try to go through the process of, of re putting that oil back into the system. I would much rather just add fresh oil for whatever oil was lost. That is my personal uh, preference in that situation. Now, if you can get the machine online, even if just for a short time, try to get some of that oil back. So a way to do that, if, if, if you were in a situation where you had a severe migration event, the way that I've, I've done it, I'll add just enough oil into the sump to allow the machine to come on online safely. So, I mean, just enough oil. And once you get it online, the oil recovery system, whether it be a ductors or an RTHD, it's a gas pump assembly, whatever system they're using to uh, recover that oil back. Um, and, you know, in, in a YCIV example, there's no oil recovery mechanism, but it, those will still stack oil in the evaporator and it can migrate there. At that point, like in those circumstances, it just needs to run, right? We just need to get that, that compressor to run. Even if, say, if we can get 20, 30 minutes, it may not get everything, but we'll get a pretty good portion depending on the type of recovery that they have, the, the, the oil recovery. I mean, you'll get a pretty good amount of that oil back where it needs to be, whether in the sump, the oil separator, whatever the case. So on some of these, it doesn't take very long, and I would do my best even if I had to even if it wasn't completely safe for the machine, but I knew that I could make it run for a short time. Like I would try. Now that's me. And that also is very situational. There's some points that it's just not an option. You've got to be able to determine that. Um, you as the technician on site have to make that call. Yeah, I wouldn't, to, to answer very specifically, I, I wouldn't bother trying to put that oil back in. I would just trash it and move on to putting fresh in, getting the machine back online. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed, I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's where I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you for all of those that are in the Academy, y'all are doing some great work out there keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 